Hello everybody, it's Friday. I'm jovial. Paul's a little purple and bleedy. And um I know I can. a little shaving mishap. <clears throat> Sensitive area right under my nose. Must be all the drugs I do. I don't know what's going on. Paul, there was some big news today. And I don't mm -hmm. I don't think you caught wind of it because I, I believe well, if you would have caught wind, you probably would have pinged me about it. Mm, okay. Are you you're familiar with essentials? The essentials, the, the phone or central, the phone company, Andy Rubin thing. Oh yeah. Yep. So you know what they bought? They bought something. Mm -hmm. Did they buy a phone they can actually sell? Sorry. What did they buy? They bought, uh, they bought the Newton mail app. Really? Not even kidding. So what did, what did two turkeys make again? Do you remember the, how did that add up? Not a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> really? How did I, 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 it was. It kind of flew under the radar. An obscure site kind of reported. TechCrunch wrote about it um, like an hour ago. I saw it really early this morning because somebody messaged me and said, "Oh my God, somebody bought Cloud." The Cloud Magic part of it, I think, is the, the business company, but it's their business was Newton Mail, and so they have yeah. bought this. And yeah, <laughs> if they could bring it back to life in any some sort of fashion, Andy Rubin will get many of my rubles uh, to. Let me re-download it and get it all set back up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, eh. I wonder, uh, Essential says we are always on the outlook for companies yeah. with great technology and talent to help accelerate our product roadmap. Maybe they're going to go more the software route. It worked for Next, you know? I was just I, wish, I really wish I could stop bleeding. This is really irritating. I was more just surprised that Essentials had money that to buy some. <laughs> I mean that was yeah. yeah. That was which is what makes me nervous about this. I I mean provided all their their material was right that they put on their blog, which granted I know is a little heavy-handed because Newton mails whatever they're going to they're going to spin things positive, but they said mm -hmm. at one point they had 40,000 paying subscribers. I don't yeah. understand how they were losing money, but I I don't know, but um yeah, if we had 40,000 paying subscribers, we would be doing the show from Aruba. Yeah, and I would get to play, <laughs> you know? like, I, I wouldn't yeah. be playing PUBG on an Xbox. I would be hiring people to go lay right. out in the field, and then I'd, you know, do all that. I wouldn't be bleeding now. I'd be, I'd have some. I don't know if that would fix bleeding. person would I mean, be fanning me to prevent the bleeding. I don't, can you do platelet transfers? Maybe we can get you some more platelets. I just have blood. really sensitive skin, Brad. I don't understand why. I it is wintertime. It is um, a little chilly. You know, you got to moisturize and, and, um, <laughs> it's true. I don't do enough. I don't do enough moisturizing. I think that's a fair statement. Maybe we will ship you some, uh, we should start selling Throp branded cocoa butter for all your lubricating <laughs> yes. needs. Right. Your... If you look at my bathroom, everything in there has like a little colored T logo on it. <laughs> you know, Man, it's kind of hard to tell things from each other, but you know what I hate about Skype among the many things. See that little window up top. Yep. I got to get rid of that. Oh, you're right. Okay, there's two of them for me because I see the one I normally see and then the one that shouldn't be broadcasted. How fun. That's the thing you hate about Skype? Well, the, the challenge with it is, is so I call Paul and I, whatever, I call him and I get him, the stream up and running and that window opens, which it, it's fine. It's the first mm -hmm. time it opens, it's fine. I have no problem with that. So I close it and then I click on XSplit, which allows me to do this and then it reopens yep. again. Until I have, so I have to close it a second time, and then stupid. Yeah. Now you're not using Skype on the computer right in front of you. Skype is on a machine in somewhere far in away the, from you, so you have to get up in the cloud. Well, in so the cloud, the, thing you, the desk over there. Right. Um, the one thing I, one of the things I can't stand about the new Skype. Well, there's a couple things. Like, if you mouse over the the video chat that mm -hmm. we're doing now, you can see like controls kind of appear, and one of them yep. is like a throbbing heart. It sits there and it it throbs. Are you sure that's Why not what's any... causing your bleeding? <laughs> no, that's a real heart that's throbbing that's causing mm. it. But uh, I, well, why would it be animated? I, like, how distracting is that? Or if you just go into like a normal chat window, I noticed this mm. yesterday in our meeting. Um, a, there's the little bubbles that let you know when someone has seen something you've typed. Yep. Right? Which, I got to be honest, completely pointless. But... The thing I hate the most is next to everything that someone has written, every one of those little text bubbles, mm -hmm. there's a little smiley face. What? And and that is another way that I, I can click on that to get to to do a reaction. 
So here's what I just learned as I said this. A, why is it a smiley face? It looks like everyone's typing smiley faces. B, it's actually the same function that I described as a, a, a throbbing red heart on the video window, but it has a different icon in the chat window. Why would there be two different chat like icons for the same thing? We're just going to rename this episode Old Man Rants About Icons. But you, okay. <laughs> but, you, but seriously, I'm not, right? Look, I'm not saying you're wrong. Like, the, 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 my, and not the, this was not in the show notes to just rip on Skype. The no, thing that just, Skype this needs to do. Organically. <laughs> this happens with no prompting whatsoever. I just want Skype to be the basic chat app that it was born to be. It doesn't need to have, what they're chasing is user engagement. They want people clicking and, and, and playing with the app. And all people want to do is just not play in the app. I just, yeah, yeah. I'd also like to not bleed. Maybe Skype could have a feature where it hides the blood. Michael that Martinez says in the it. chat room, he says your house must be in Chernobyl. <laughs> um, well, it is in the Wild West, based on my experiences from last night. But uh, Yeah, kind of more like the Middle East. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, he didn't have an AK-47 at least. But yeah. um, <laughs> these, these show notes are going real well today. Right. Sorry about it's that. A, this is this is the everyday. Um, the other things that are happening this week before we talk to the topic du jour is uh, if you play this game on the PC, not my drink here, which I'm under hydrated this morning. Um, if you play this game on the PC, there's a new snow map. If you're on Xbox or PlayStation 4 now, uh, that'll be coming in January. And um, it's, 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 yeah. If you want to play Black Ops on the PC, you can get it now for 30 bucks. It only includes multiplayer and Blackout, which is their battle royale game. Mm -hmm. So you don't get uh, the zombie experience. Which honestly, I never play anyway. So yeah, it's only PC. So if you happen to be a PC gamer, it's actually kind of a a nice cheap way to get into the, what is already the best selling game of the year. Uh, See, here's, here's the interesting thing again. about what you just said. Yeah. So I I firmly believe that it probably is the best selling game of the year. Mm -hmm. But is it really? Because I would, I would, uh, yeah, I well. would almost guarantee that Fortnite has more transactions, um, but f Fortnite's free, so there's no buying of the game. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, right. So Call of Duty is still a, a retail game that people pay sixty bucks a shot yep. for, or, or more. Actually, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I basically pay one hundred twenty bucks a year to play this game. But um, yeah, no, I, I Fortnite has changed the game industry. In fact, I just saw this thing this morning about Counter Strike. Is, which is an ancient game, is available for free right now for some reason, and they have added a Battle Royale game, right? Sure. Like, like the, in, the influence of Fortnite cannot be understated, cannot be overstated. Well, what excuse did me. I do? Um, oh. Yeah, it's huge. There we go. But yeah, I mean, they didn't, uh, they didn't charge for it on... The thing is, though, is I love this game. Like, I, I play it all the time. It's... PUBG. It, well, I mean... Compared compared to Call of Duty, this is the golf of first person shooters, right? It's slower. It's a little. It's out <laughs> it's in like, the. It's like what do you mean? Okay. Well, I mean, if you play the larger maps, you're not you're not just running into battle all the time. It's a little bit slower pace. Granted, there's stress involved, and you play in a team or you play in a foursome. Actually, much like golf, you're it's out in like the wilderness. The serial killer of shooters is what I would call it. Although I guess like golf, you could often be looking over to a great expanse of green and never mm -hmm. see anyone else. Yeah, you can. And that's part of the fun because then you got to get a vehicle and drive across it. And sometimes you flip and roll and kill your whole squad. And other times you sacrifice your whole squad so you can run over somebody. That is my favorite thing to do. Be in a car full of four people. We'll see someone standing next to a rock. And I will hit that rock at 120 kilometers an hour. Kill the person, my entire squad. But at least I got a kill. It happens. Right. It is job one, really. It is. I got my kill. That sucks that you guys didn't. Sorry. Catch you next time. Yeah, you would fit right in with Call of Duty then because <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> that is basically the mentality. So, anyways, uh, the big news of the day, which is not my dapperly dressed mm -hmm. guy who goes into battle every day, is uh, Snapdragon late yesterday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, uh, about 1 p.m. Pacific time, whatever, something Hawaii time. Uh, I don't know why I'm giving you time zones. Uh, announced the Snapdragon 8CX. That is, it stands for like computing extreme, or extreme computing, or something random in that nature. But... What's important here is that this is a ARM-based chip designed specifically for Windows PCs. So it's there's mobile aspects to it, but it's not that they just took the same 835 that was in a phone, threw it in a laptop, and installed Windows. Um, this is just what they did before. 
Yeah, which is what they did before. This is a, hey, we actually are doing this right third time around, very much in the Microsoft, you know, do three mm -hmm. things, everything three times to get it right. And so, um, yeah, this is going to be super interesting. You know, I'm looking at all the photos people are posting from this event, and they are mirror images of what we did last year. Like, it's exactly the same. Oh, did you see what I tweeted Rich Woods today? He was online this morning, yeah, and he was talking early. about watching watching a show. And it was windy, that, right? Was it the windy thing? No, no, no. Before, the, before that, this is how yeah. he got to the windy part. He was in his room like, oh, great. I can watch all the shows that are usually on at 3 a.m. or something uh, at 10 a.m. in Hawaii. And I said, Rich... Go outside, walk to the beach, turn left, find that path, and walk for an hour. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Because, uh, by the way, I almost did that to him as well. He, he had a tweet where he said something like, oh, it's cute that the hotel here tried to prevent me from accessing the HDMI port on my TV. And my response to that, which I did not post publicly, <laughs> but what went through my head was like, how the frick do you know <laughs> that there's an HDMI port on a TV in a hotel room, but that, by the way, is in Hawaii? Yeah. Go outside. <laughs> Don't get us wrong, guys. We love Rich is a good friend. Yeah. Um, I talk to him yeah, frequently, yeah. but... He's in Hawaii, the same place Paul and I went last year. Uh, maybe maybe we'll go literally, next year. Exactly um, yeah, literally the same place that we got lost uh, multiple times. Yes, yes we, that's true. And so it is a, it's a gorgeous place, but it's very, very far away. Yeah, it's just too much travel to do it this year. We, we could have gone, but um, yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I mean, there's a part of me, I see some of the pictures, I'm like, oh yeah, this place is really great, you know, but um, Honestly, we can cover this news fine and not be there. And yep. being there is not going to help us answer the questions that we have about this thing, which is, you know, what is the performance really like? And mm -hmm. they're claiming Core i5. We don't know what that means exactly. Does they mean like dual core, Core i5, Y, you know, whatever. But right. I, if, if they're in that ballpark, this, this solves 50% of the problem with Windows 10 and ARM. Um, there's... Not much they can do to solve the other 50%, which is this compatibility issue, right? Mm -hmm. Which is 64-bit Win32 apps. Everything Adobe makes, for example, uh, Photoshop, et cetera. Um, except maybe work with Adobe and those companies and see if they can make that happen on an app-by-app -app basis. So far, by the way, has not happened, not once. <laughs> but that's the goal. And so, you know, they, they've done some porting, like Firefox is being ported to ARM, so that will work natively on the platform. Uh, Chromium, of course, is as well. What about Edge? And they're working... Yeah, and uh, it, well, <laughs> Edge actually already works, but um, nobody uses it on that Does platform it? either. Yeah, um, <laughs> so That's, that is low blow. Anyways, anyway, it's it, this seems like good news. I, I will say, I just this week got in a Snapdragon eight fifty based PC, right? The first one, I believe, it's the Lenovo Yoga C six thirty, and. With the understanding that the first generation Snapdragon 835 based PCs were literally unusable and were the rare product that I cannot recommend to mm -hmm. anybody in any circumstance, this one is better. And it's still, um, you know, what I want to do is compare it to I have that Intel Y series uh, HP Envy, and I'm going to do some performance comparisons with, the, with that perhaps today. Mm -hmm. But um, somebody recommended to me a a set of benchmarks that runs on ARM as well as on uh, Intel, and it's mm -hmm. it's based it's a store app, and so I did run this benchmark across on both the 835 and the 850 system. And again, this is just a number, you know, and, and I'm not sure what it means <laughs> exactly, but it was 22 percent faster than the 835 based system. So That's Qualcomm, decent. yeah, yeah, Qualcomm claims 30 percent. Um, I will say just anecdotally and using it. With with a couple of rare exceptions, I, I it, it's fine. When you do something like mm -hmm. load Microsoft Word, it com it comes right up. It appears instantly. It's it's very quick. If you do something like run Chrome, which right now is a, an x86 application, has to be emulated. Um, it, it, there's a slowness to the initial drawer of the window, and the way I see it is that I use a um, a plugin called Momentum as my new tab screen. It's a, it's just a beautiful picture. Yeah, I use the it's, same thing actually. This is weird. Yeah. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, when you run, if if I leave Chrome, the last time I used Chrome, the only thing left in the window is that new tab screen, and I close it, and then I bring it back up. What happens is that the window comes up. It's white. There's a blue or a kind of a greenish blue circle in the middle with an M on it. That's the logo mm -hmm. for Momentum. You don't normally see this on your desktop system. Usually, it just kind of comes up, and then the, you know, then the actual Image, uh, yeah yeah appears. So there's that little bit of it. Um, but I wouldn't call it a, a deal breaker. Like it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's 22 hours of battery life. 
uh, I think it's 1.2 gigabyte, gigabit, I guess, LTE networking. Um, it does have 8 gigs of RAM. It's UFS storage, which I think is fine, 120 gigabytes. Um, it's not like some of the, you know, some of the really crappy PCs we've seen this year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it is better, you know. And so I gotta, I'm going to keep using it. I don't want to – I'm going to write a performance follow-up on this thing, but – I would say they're heading in the right direction. And so when you look at the 8CX or whatever they're calling it, um, this is supposedly two times as good as the 835 or the 840 or the 850. I'm not really sure which, but um, that could be significant. Here's the thing that excites me about Qualcomm taking this more and I, I think it's fair to say a more intentional direction with their mm -hmm. chips is... For Intel releasing chips year over year over year, they're gonna hit. They're gonna have a certain amount of sales, and they're gonna do whatever. They could probably estimate it out a couple years about what's gonna go on with their chip sales. Yeah. Qualcomm, on the other hand, is massively incentivized to make a desktop class processor on ARM be successful because they have zero sales. Let's just say yeah. last year was zero, whatever, ten thousand, something very small. Zero. It rounds to zero. Right. Qualcomm's upside for as a business, if they can make this happen, is massive. They can make yeah. a whole bunch of money that will take away from Intel that's good for the consumer. But more importantly, it's good for Qualcomm. And so if there's one company out there right now that could upset what Intel is doing and make Intel get serious about building chips and building high performance stuff, it's Qualcomm. It's not AMD. Um, NVIDIA, you could potentially lump in there too. But I, I'm very hopeful that Qualcomm gets this figured out and really makes these chips just awesome because then Intel has to compete again, which they haven't had to do for a while. Yeah. Uh, um, the value prop here has always been the same. Like if the worst thing that happens is Qualcomm fails, but they have uh, influenced Intel to the point where they make their chips more efficient, mm -hmm. we all, st we still win. Yep. Um, the only, uh, the, the kind of questions for the future are, you know, a, when will these new PCs appear? According to Qualcomm, not until Q3 of next year. Q3 is July and on. And so mm -hmm. uh, given the timing of things in the PC industry, what that basically means is an August reveal and then a release in October, November. So it, sure. it's kind of later than I would like. The other thing just to kind of keep in your back of your mind, <clears throat> and this probably won't happen unless Windows 10 and ARM takes off in an appreciable way, but way back when, <laughs> you know, when this was first announced, uh, Microsoft said, and 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 Terry um, confided in me privately about the rationale for this, but um, that we're working with Qualcomm because we need someone uh, with scale that can make this yep. thing happen. And you can see the impact that they're having. I mean, they uh, a few companies could do what they're doing right now. So it's kind of incredible. Uh, but if this thing takes off, they're going to open this up to other arm makers, right? And that yep. could impact Qual Qualcomm's uh, market share or whatever. Um, so you know, we'll we'll see, but. Right now, it's very clear that they were the right partner mm -hmm. uh, to go forward with this. And things like, you know, all this Chromium, there's a bunch of nonsense. Like Microsoft was working with Google on Chromium, you know, for ARM. And no, they weren't. But Qualcomm was. <laughs> and Qualcomm has a, real, like, a, a even arguably a vested interest bigger than Microsoft's in some ways to make this platform sure. make sense. Um, and they're the ones who are, are, are really pushing this stuff through. And so in, I, <laughs> this is a sad comparison I, I i'm sorry if this will go off the wrong way i don't mean it like this but they're almost uh, like nokia coming on board with windows phone um, because this is something that would have been dead in the water mm -hmm. without their involvement a smaller arm-based company could not do this and uh, the only chance of survival they have is for qualcomm to be this involved in this engaged you know yeah i don't i, I don't disagree i this is I don't know. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I, I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, I'm excited to see how this is going to pair with Windows Lite. Uh, I keep learning more and more about what Microsoft has up their sleeve with that. And um, Actually, you know, if I could just, just real quick on the Windows Lite thing, I, yeah. the one thing I will say is regardless of anyone's impressions of the system, um, based on our understanding of what it is, um, this is an ideal thing for the ARM platform, right? Because... Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about the desktop app compatibility thing, even though Microsoft did, in fact, solve that to some degree with emulation. And so now what you get is a system that has all of the benefits of ARM, the battery life, 25 hours-ish, probably more in this system, uh, the standby time, the uh, seamless connectivity, you know, whatever the new user experience is, whatever that looks like. I mean, it's kind of a nice combination of yep. things 
and it makes it more viable. Um, it, it, in some ways, it's a better match to the ARM stuff, you know, than big Windows is. Yeah, the big thing too, and I have a Surface with LTE around here. I got a review for next week. I've been using it for a bit, um, but with Google Fi. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's Google Fi, not Project Fi. Google Fi coming on board with all this stuff and eSIM starting to kick around. Mm -hmm. These things might be coming online right at about the right time, at least for me personally. Because one of the reasons why I haven't really ever gone that LTE route is one, Verizon is just prohibitively expensive to do that. Um, they charge you like 10 bucks a month for another SIM because they're jerks and all that stuff. And I'm hoping that eSIM comes along with this Qualcomm stuff and makes it real simple for me to just dump my data on there with Project Fi or Google Fi. I mean, you and, could get a data sim right now and do the same and still do this. Um, I, the I issue know, is I like being able to. No, I, I get it, but I yeah. mean the the um, uh, the trick there is you would have to be on Project or a Google Fi as your primary carrier because the thing mm -hmm. you're describing, like ten bucks a month on the sim, like you'd have your project, your uh, Google Fi would have to be activated, and the base price of that thing is. Thirty dollars if you include data, or really twenty dollars in taxes, whatever. Right, but uh, if I'm already so. on it, like I, I'm. But if you're already very, on it, yes. Very tempted once this kind of gets through that teething issue, and the, the the reason this jumps into my mind is that we're looking at uh, vacations for next year, and yep. I think I'm not going to explain where we're going, but I think Paul and I will end up in Washington D.C. in mm -hmm. June, and so what we're yep. trying to do is maybe go hit like a beach vacation, like Myrtle Beach, somewhere a few days before yep. that. And we might end up driving just because we typically travel a lot and um, mm -hmm. whatever. We'll, we'll drive to Myrtle Beach and I'm thinking, well, Surface Go with LTE would be great for my kid in the backseat <laughs> to stream the crap to keep her quiet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. that's true. This is dad planning 102. 101 would be learning what, I don't know, a device with LTE is, I guess. Something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's That's a possibility. Yeah. So we will see. We shall see. What else is going on in the world? Did Skype update it's something that Mahedi wrote about, but I didn't even actually see because I was too busy trying to... I saw the image for that uh, article in the editor, and I thought it was a spammer. <laughs> so, because it was a picture of an attractive young woman, and I thought, there's no way this is for our site. And so I started looking through the comments that weren't approved to see if I could mm -hmm. find the spammer, but it was. It turns out it was, <laughs> it was for the Skype article. I will throw this image up there. Oops, where did it go? There we go. This one behind me, because a lot of people are saying, "Oh my God, this is Centaurus." Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. I can't. <laughs> you talk about the book-looking thing that yeah. was in the Snapdragon video. Yeah, it is per my understanding that that is not, in fact, Centaurus. So, for those people who are looking, um, some people were saying it looks like two Surface Goes next to each other. It's not that either. Um, it's just a Qualcomm sure. thing. So, don't get yeah. overly excited by it. But. Well, I mean, the whole industry is looking at foldable and two-screen device types. Yep of various kinds. And so I don't think that's a thing that exists. I think that's a thing where they're like, look, this is the type of thing that our platform enables. You could, you know, we can do this new thing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's meant to represent an actual product. You know, what's going to be super interesting though. I just thought about this. Imagine, mm -hmm. imagine that Centaurus device, right? Remember what Microsoft showed off at the New York event with Android apps? The uh, how you can mirror your <laughs> like, Android app. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I was at that event. Am I losing yeah. my mind? Yeah, you were sitting right next to me. I know you were. Good thing you were paying attention. I think Panos sprayed me with some pheromones or something. Graphic. Very graphic. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious of how that's going to play into all this, too, especially with Windows Lite. That was kind of where my head was going. They've got this Android app kind of replication thing on Windows. Granted, Windows Lite... Had, might be missing some of the component tree, but I don't know. Yeah, that, there's a, there's um, a narrative here somewhere, and I'm trying to figure out how it all pieces together. Right. So, in other words, instead of bringing back Project Astoria or whatever, mm -hmm. using a, an app mirroring thing, because your phone's going to be with you all the time anyway. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's possible. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. geez, I mean, you've used this kind of thing, sort of, right? Like yeah. remote apps. I, you know, it's not. I, I think when the stuff starts to make sense is when you have some sort of local app virtualization technology, right? Mm -hmm. It's something Microsoft's had in the enterprise for a long, long time. AppV, MedV, whatever. And in the beginning days, those things were really kind of um, unsophisticated. So you could be running like Windows XP, and the window that would come up would look like a Windows 2000 window because the thing it was running on back in the you know data center or something was Windows Server something, whatever. And... Um, 
over time it became local to the machine and it became natural looking to the user. So uh, if you had a, I don't know, like a application app V version of word next to a local version of Excel, Mm -hmm. you could run the thing side by side, copy and paste between them. You'd never even notice the difference. And, um, it, I still think bringing Android to Windows would be huge, and you know maybe that's the first step, and maybe what I'm describing is the second step. Yeah. But I think it's something you want where you're on a plane and you, it still works. Your phone doesn't have to, you know. Mm-hmm. And we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. They, uh, I mean, sure, this week has been kind of upending in all regards. So I, well, it may yeah. have been unfathomable five months ago. Yep. Never say never at this point. Well, that was the thing I saw. I tweeted this this morning. It's like, well, in the and, and I sort of hinted that I might write something about this topic of um, anything is possible now. So let's brainstorm a little bit. Like, what what could happen? And someone asked me this uh, this morning and asked Paul, you know, like, what's what's the craziest prediction you could have given all this stuff that just happened? Like, okay, mm-hmm. like, anything is possible. What what could you predict? You know, and I'm not very good at predictions. I've never been uh, really, but. Um, Okay, but it's not hard to think of these things. What if they just open source Windows 10? You right. This yeah. goes back to this thing I keep talking about endlessly, like it makes any sense at all. But that conversation I had about maybe Linux being the underpinnings for some future mm-hmm. thing because Linux is open source and blah blah blah. Well, what if they've open source WPF and WinForms and WinUI? They've opened. They're taking the open open source Chromium for the browser. Um, it's a legacy operating system anyway. I mean, why? They could do what they're doing with Win, you know, uh, WPF. Just yeah. we, 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 this is a, this might be a better way for people to evaluate what's going on in Windows and to provide feedback about what should change, than say maybe the Insider program or whatever. Yeah, it's 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 you know it's it's crazy. I, I and I think someone could punch a hole in this theory very easily, but mm-hmm. you know, for example, Microsoft charges for Windows right now, <laughs> and uh, yeah. enterprises pay for it, but. Then again, in some ways, what they're really paying for is support and management things that go alongside Windows. I mean, uh, Windows 10 effectively is free over a period of time. I mean. Yeah, I mean, would it be that hard? Because, look, they could open source the OS and charge for patches. I mean, Ooh, granted, no, those no, patches, they'd have to, <laughs> granted, those mean, patches well, would hmm. eventually make their way into the system. Yeah, but you get, no, you get it. That has to be included. But the. Does it? Yeah, I think it does. But. I I think the real reason this won't be possible and is not something anyone is considering is because of the sheer complexity of Windows and how far mm-hmm. back a lot of the code goes. And that honestly, there would be embarrassing disclosures as hackers and people, you know, developers started looking at the code and they'd be like, oh my God, look at this piece of crap here, you know, whatever it is. Um, some legacy thing that's still sitting in there untouched. Um, and I, I, I think... They may just not want that level of scrutiny, honestly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you know, we're just again just dreaming big here. I, I think that'd be kind of incredible. And by the way, it would st- stick a knife into the heart of uh, stick a, a knife into the heart of uh, desktop Linux. I mean, it'll be yep. the end of that. Yep. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the years to come. You got anything else for today, Paul? Before I start playing more PUBG, while the video <laughs> renders. <laughs> I'm going to work on that uh, C630 thing, which is the ARM-based PC. I, I want to try to come up with some, something you know, reasonable to say about it as far as performance goes. But I, like I said, my early testing on that is, I thought there were huge scratches in its top, but it's just the logo. Um, I thought it was like gouged or something. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have that done in time for today, but I'll be looking at that today for sure. You know what I'm not going to be doing this weekend? Working. On the book. <laughs> yes. It, that is, I'll, I'll be writing. I mean, I, like, say I will be working on my book, but oh. nobody gives a shit about that. Why would they? It's, <laughs> it's like completely uninteresting. But although the audio book, the, time. the audio book is in progress for those who are, mm-hmm. and by in progress, I mean we're on stage probably two of 48, maybe, but sure. I think they sure. do. By the time you, you actually get to that surface, won't even be a thing anymore. I, think, I hope not, because then the book will never <laughs> sell again. <laughs> so, all right, folks. Well, that 
wraps it up really for this week. It's been a very interesting week. We have Edge news. We had this new Qualcomm stuff. We had Windows Lite. There was, um, I, I can't imagine that next week is going to be any crazier than this week. But have yourselves a wonderful weekend, and we'll catch you right back here next time.